customer being 1.30, we'll open up this meeting and start with public session. And I would like to represent some public people. Um, the Wisdom Project it is one of the things that we do here every Thursday morning, and we have would like to officially submit a report to the board on what the Wisdom Project is doing. And for you guys to read and peruse on it's one of the things I think that we have an actual tangible piece of stuff, if you want to call it, that we have actually talked about and thought about. And part of our project is to pass that wisdom on that we've talked about to other people. And we decided that the board of directors is a good place to start it. Um, we'll, while uh, the meeting's going on and Helen's going to do her report, then after Helen can make copies for everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I'd like the approval of minutes of the July 10th meeting. Do I hear somebody? I'll second. second. Jim? Okay. Does anyone have any corrections, deletions, or any problems with the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? And, and just so everybody knows, this meeting is being recorded. Staff okay. report, and Helen is here and under the assistant medical transportation in a fitness center. Yes. So, we've been very busy in the medical transportation and both the fitness center. So, um, what I passed around um, has um, some nice numbers on here. Um, we have 183 seniors registered in our program, medical transportation now. Of those, though, the, the more regular folks, they're about 40 to 45 people. Um, and we generally take them within the city limits. Um, but also, as, as I've written, the town lines over uh, by East Hampton and in West, ha West Hatfield. We have also, though, have seen a big increase in the rides that we're um, giving into Springfield and Greenfield mm -hmm. um, for services that are um, that are more concentrated there, more specialized. Probably, another, probably because um, people have some of the, the medical practice that are still in the Bay State, they say that both friends and family mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. family and so there's a specialist and we're after who we serve them. Um, and one thing that I also wanted to bring out that I didn't write in here is I have had inquiries as to our, our program and how it's structured. From, from various places um, because I just think that if there's such a great need for this type, especially of, of transportation, especially in areas like ours where there are those outlying areas are not rural, but there is no, no way of people getting from point A to point B, especially if they're no longer driving and have that, that support of family and the neighbors. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that was, that's something that we're going to see coming up. So, driver-wise, we have, as of the first of this month, 10 year-round drivers and we have a seasonal driver. Um, we did have, in um, fiscal year 14, we had 13 year-round and one seasonal. Um, of, of our year-round folks, the most active, there, I have six that are the most active, and they are the ones that really carry the, you know, the whole program. We've served 67 participants in, in FY14 with a total of 421 medical rides. We were unable to provide approximately 68 rides because there's no driver available for the day or the time. Um, 
and lack of time, the window. I would get a call perhaps a day prior to being off, you know, maybe half an hour before. And so I need to go, you know, tomorrow or something. So I'm not giving them that, that leeway. But most of them were because there were no drivers available um, for that time. Our revenue was uh, four thousand dollars to the penny. Um, that's as that. of September. As of that's this is for FY fourteen. Yeah. 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 So. And so, can you just talk about what some of the expenses are too? Is that the expenses uh, are basically for reimbursements to drivers, um, and they total three thousand three hundred and sixty-seven. And that they get paid for mileage at it's they're paid per trip. Each trip has a, has a structured uh, amount, so it's I guess wear and tear. Yeah, it's, a, it's a flat fee per yeah. trip, depending um, where the trip is going. Okay, so the base day would be get paid more. more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Do they use their own vehicle? They do use their own vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, folks need to be able to. Uh, take themselves physically from point A to point B. Um, we're not, you know, picking people off. Okay, you so know. You're, you know, do people need training? The drivers need training? No, they are just there to provide transportation, yep. And they wait there for any appointments. Any questions on um, medical transportation? Yeah, so, yes, so your revenues exceeded your expenses? Yes. So it's a profit zone. Yeah. No, we have to pay much. Helen. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's for free. It really gets a wash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we, we don't look at it as a place where we bring in revenue no. that we can use. Like there isn't a net gain to yeah. us. Mm -hmm. so. But it's not losing money, which it was at some point. Um, so we had to change the fee schedule and just how much people were going to be getting and having to pay. So. It's a program sure. that pays for itself. It's growing. Sure. It is yeah, growing. It's growing. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 There is, and it's going to be bigger. Yeah. You know, yeah. the population yeah. increases yeah. of folks over the age of 60. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so, can I just mention yes. one thing? So, when we started this program, we had volunteers who were manning um, the phone uh, for medical transportation, and it was becoming very discombobulated and the volunteers were doing very well but it, it wasn't cohesive and so hence we hired Helen um, to run the program and again the program pays for itself. So moving along to Fitness Center. The Fitness Center has done, I think it's done really well in um, Fiscal year 14, we have 273 members. These 273 members attended 7,926 times during that fiscal year. In contrast to FY13, where we had 185 members um, from 7,011 times. 20, our, um, our most active members, our 25 top members, have attended 90 plus times each during that fiscal year. So I think that's, that, that shows that these people are um, interested in keeping themselves well. And as you can see, the bottom line there, our revenue is over $15,000 just over that. So we've done nicely. And it's busy in there. Take a look. The center is busy. It's running nicely. Um, we have orientation schedule just about every day. And um, that's about it. What, what do you think is the max number on that for capacity? Have you thought about what the max would be that you could possibly run through and still have it smooth? We haven't come across any issues. Our most busy times are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays between opening, you know, 8.15 to about 11.30, and we haven't had any complaints uh, regarding 
um, you know, people having to wait to use the machine. The only machines that they would ever have to wait for is cardio because of the expanded uh, time. Mm. Um, but we do tell people to not go over that default time that the machines turn on and say 20 minutes during those times. Um, so I couldn't give you a number. People usually, um, if someone is using something, they'll go to something else. We haven't had that issue come up, come up yet. <laughs> it, so. it is something that we keep track of mm -hmm. to make sure that it's not bulging and we can't really, uh, we don't have the capacity to take care of everybody who wants to join. So yeah, I'm sure there's we, peak hours. And right. And, and I'm just going to add that we have some people who, from day one that fitness center was open, are still in that fitness yeah. center, and they're very loyal and good for them for staying healthy. They are. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I'm going to and so again, looking at the revenue, um, it's not a profit center for us. Too bad. Um, it help, helps pay for um, uh, the two MCOA uh, assistants in there, and then also part of Helen's salary. And it also is, funds are being set aside because that equipment in, in a short period of time is going to have to be replaced. And it also pays for the equipment to be repaired. So we've had some of that. Mm -hmm. Who gave us that equipment? Um, it was purchased by, um, well, monies came in from People's Bank, United Bank, and one other. Florence? No, Florence paid for the bistro. Um, there's a plaque outside the fitness center, and that's how that equipment was purchased. Mm -hmm. and well, now you can approach Refill. Yeah, <laughs> Refill yeah. Bank's now part of our community. Uh, Jim, you need to do some jumping jacks. Why is that? Because you look cold. Oh, I'm not cold. Okay, just the opposite. I'm very warm. Oh, wow. I got the wrong kind of sweater. Oh, I'll take it. Any other questions for Helen? For me? Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll move along to finances and the FY14 and 15 budgets. Um, so everyone should have a copy of the PS and OM budget. over to FY15. So um, we are free and clear that we paid all that we owed the city uh, for salaries uh, and whatever may have been over in the OM account. So for us, we have a zero balance for FY14. And now we're in FY15 and as soon as they uh, do the books, then we'll I'll be able to give you a, a sheet that reflects what our budget is for FY15. So again, uh, monies to pay for the salaries. That's what we were obligated to pay to the city for salaries. Um, came from the uh, Executive Office of Elder Affairs grant, from our activities revolving account, from the gift account, from the gift shop, from the food services. Um, any of those accounts all goes um, to assist with paying salaries. So those are some of our profit centers there. Um, and so right now the city is, we can't um, pay any bills munis, which is our um, software program for the city for finances. Um, we aren't able to enter anything because they are changing over from FY14 to FY15, which this happens every single year. So maybe in October I'll be able to give you an FY15 um, report 
that's what I have to say for FY14 and FY15. Any questions for Fanny on finance? We'll move on to the director's report. Yes. Um, I'm going to pass around a card that was sent to uh, the uh, board for flowers that were sent to Joan Finn. Uh, and it's uh, from her family for sending those sympathy flowers. So thank you, everybody who, who contributed to that. Um, Highland Valley Elder Services, which is on the agenda later on, um, I just wanted to announce that they have hired a new executive director, Alan Wiemat, and after this meeting, we have a, um, Mike uh, Ahern and I have a meeting with him um, to meet him, and we should invite him again, like we did Jira, to the, the board so that we can meet and greet him. Yes. The courtesy. That, that's, that's up to you. That's your decision. Uh, the bricks for the garden, and as you know, that's um, a, a fundraiser, and that helps to maintain the garden and assist in other ways. We've sold seven uh, bricks to date, and those are um, $100 each. And people can have anything that they want put on it, you know, within the time <coughs> the time space of. Um, I have one. <laughs> How much do we put on there? And so one of the questions is, you know, oh, you know, what can you put on it? And it's really whatever you're interested in putting on. You know, it could say happy birthday, it could say, you know, thinking of you. It could be okay. anything like that. It isn't a brick that memorializes Frank or Mary Neto. And you can have anything that you want on it. So I we have forms at the front desk, so if any of you are interested, but any people that you might know um, might be interested. So we have some people who um, are submitting it. It's not necessarily that they're a senior or are connected to the senior center. So um, it's just nice to see. Frank Netto will be putting the bricks that we have ordered already um, and that have been engraved in there next week. October 8th, 9th, and 10th, the Massachusetts Councils on Aging and Senior Centers holds their yearly conference in uh, Falmouth. And Crystal Heather, Michelle, and I will be attending that. Um, and so you'll be, some of you will be getting calls to fill in here at the Senior Center. Just I always like to have a board member on staff, um, even though there are some other staff here. It's just that when even one person is not here, you can feel the difference. So. Some of you have the experience at the front desk. Um, we'll probably be getting calls. Uh, we held our own sidewalk sale days here, like they did downtown Northampton, and on July 24th and 25th, and that was a fundraiser for us. Uh, and it, you know, it was pretty well attended. We left stuff out because there was the um, Hay Fox Theater was here also, so we had extra um, shoppers. Um, Mary Smith's family um, and I have been meeting to discuss a specific item that um, would be put here uh, in her memory. And one of the things that I came up with was a type of a display bulletin board about volunteers. Um, so Crystal and I are working on a design for that. Um, and the family is in agreement that that would be a nice item to have in the senior center. And Mary Smith, as you know, was on the board, but she also was a volunteer uh, for many years before being on the board. And she used to be one um, one of the volunteers who was either first or second of the most hours put in um, at the senior center when we did our volunteer recognition dinner. Um, September 24th, uh, Crystal and I will be attending the RSVP luncheon. We have a number of volunteers in our building who are part of the RSVP program, um, and we received an invitation to attend, so we will be doing that. Many seniors have been uh, talking to me about the storm water fees, and, uh, and most yeah, so they've been asking questions about it. I don't know a lot about this stormwater piece, except that you are going to be, uh, if you're a property owner, you will be um, 
given a, a, a dollar amount based on your, your uh, property. And that's about all I know. So I'm going to be asking something, thank you, from the DPW to come and, you know, highlight what, what it's all about, what it means, and just so everyone can be um, more educated about what, it, what that fee is all about. So that, that will be happening. I, I would make sure everybody knows, because we'll do a lot of publicity about it. So, um, you know, you'll be hearing about that, because I think a number of people sitting in this room um, are property owners. We will be having an open house here September 28th, and that's because um, this is a National Senior Center Month. So we will be having an open house from one to three, and I invite and encourage all of the board to come so you can meet and greet um, members of the community and uh, be part of what we're going to be putting on. Um, we're very uh, happy that Home Watch of Western Mass will be sponsoring the refreshments that we will be serving. So thank you, Crystal, for making that arrangement. Uh, the property. On that. Yes. Are we going to have the class thing like we had before? Yes. So you do my show, you know, talking yeah. pony thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We were counting on that, so Okay. <laughs> Heather will be talking to you about it. But we'll be having demonstrations, um, we'll have displays, there'll be entertainment, and as I said, light refreshments. Staff will be here to answer questions and we'll have tours of the building. So you certainly are all welcome. And um, again I encourage you to attend in your official capacity. The property tax workoff program has been going well. We um, have 12 participants, and three of those participants work here at the senior center um, as receptionists and also um, greeters slash uh, gift shop. So the next series, which will be uh, January 1st, 2015 through November 30th, 2015, the applications will be available in October, and um, the mayor will be doing a publicity um, release on that. So that'll be coming up. And we are, I already have a list of four people who, beyond the people right now, who are interested in participating next year. So it is income eligible, um, and people would work up to 125 hours. And um, you know, there's a variety of departments in the city who are um, open to having participants. So it's a good program for people to get something um, reduced on their property taxes. On September 16th at 5 o'clock, the Commission on Disability, and I'm the ADA coordinator, so I'm very involved with the Commission on Disability. We are sponsoring a round table and have discussion, and it, we've invited a number of surrounding communities um, to come and it's to discuss uh, issues around disabilities. Um, and so we have people coming from like the Berkshires and from the Springfield area. Um, there's probably about 30 people who will be in attendance. We also have Je Jeff Dugan from the Mass Office on Disability coming um, who you know can answer questions about disability law that we all don't necessarily know about. It's all kinds of disabilities, not just physical disabilities. It's any kind of disability, yeah. So there will be a lot of people representing different um, communities, and I'm sure each community has some specific uh, need for information about disabilities. And the public is invited to that. It's an open public meeting. Um, and again, that's September 15th, um, uh, yeah, September 16th at 5 o'clock here at the Senior Center. Um, and uh, lastly, I will, um, you probably saw in the insert in the previous Country Chronicle that um, I'm starting a campaign for raising funds for one or two vans so that we can really have a viable transportation program. So I'm looking to board members, one or two who might be interested in coordinating that effort. So if you are, you know, it's not it's not necessarily daunting, but it would require, you know, some organizational skills and time to, to do that. So if you're interested 
it would be wonderful um, and much appreciated if there's someone who might be one or two board members who might be interested in um, in helping with that. Um, I am going to apply for uh, CPA funds, community preservation monies, and also uh, capital improvements with the city. And then once you know we do have vans, it means that there needs to some be somebody putting all the calls and setting up the schedules and stuff. So that really means some type of a dispatcher, and then looking at um, getting both paid and volunteer uh, van drivers. So um, that's kind of like the big project uh, coming up as a, a major fundraiser um, that's not one of our social um, fundraisers um, necessarily. So that's, that's what I have for my reward. Any questions for Patty and the director's report? I'm sorry? I thought you said you wanted, uh, never mind. Well, you want to volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Get away from her. <laughs> 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 How are we doing? She's going to talk to me later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Get your hands See me after. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on to building and grounds report. Um. Well, I'm, you know, I'm going to say Bob keeps this building running and looking great, um, as well as the outside. Um, you know, I, I would say if anything, it would be great getting rid of the pigeons. I just know it's like two, Tuesday with the election. I don't know why all of a sudden there's a lot, I wanted to vote. A lot, a lot of feathers. Outside. Every once in a while it happens, and I thought, oh, maybe they're in, uh, under the... Um, awning fighting or something, but for some reason there are a lot of feathers, which is a little, I think, disruptive to how clean it looks. Do you know why that is? No. They're, the hawks are migrating. There's thousands of red-tailed hawks in here right now, and that's like candy to them. So in the early morning, in the early morning, there's always pigeons disappearing. In the oh, oh, in the proud, yeah. I mean, when the hawks come out and get them, there's yep. actually a... Yep. Well, well, I, would, the I would welcome the hawks on top of yeah. the cupola yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to stay. Well, it's it's, it's, it's the largest yeah. migration in the last ten really? years, supposedly. Wow! Wow! How do we get them to come closer? If, if you want to, <laughs> if, if you want to see them, if you go on the Mount Tom in the early morning, there's hundreds circling, hundreds, um, wow. kind of cool. Yeah, oh. they're beautiful. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, that's the, everything's going fine with the structure and um, I, I am in the process and I mentioned this before but now it's pretty much in the works that I've talked to Councillor Ryan O'Donnell who is our ward counselor uh, for our building Ward 3 um, about additional handicapped parking out here because I do yeah. get a lot of people who there just isn't enough parking um, for handicapped. So. It should be closer to the building as opposed to out there. Yeah, um, so that when you, if you're walking out the door, the, the line of uh, parking spaces to the left, those, um, there's eight of them that would be handicapped parking. So there's a process you go through, and the first one is going to um, transportation and parking. Um, so in October, I'll go to that meeting to say that you know, this is a necessary thing here. So. So is that going to be like a pro forma thing where you're just going to get it? I would assume so, right? Is um, it a scene I, I or a center? Uh, I didn't see. No. Trust me, I know all about is parking. Yeah. <laughs> but even if they're not yeah. charging you, or does it make sense? Yeah, it, it's a fiasco. You have to go through about 17 different organizations, and you have to be able to fill okay. the money for the paint and all this other just yeah. block them so, so to answer your question, I'm not really sure what you know. If we have to go to this committee, that committee, back to council, and come back. I don't, I don't know that. But one of the things I'm really hoping is that because you know it's being requested through the city that um, that DPW provides those signs because we actually paid for signs that say Senior Center out on Con Street and um, Old South Street. I, I, you know, I, I'm hoping that they pay for the handicap signs. The Middle Street people will donate the signs for Middle Street. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Is, it, is it possible for your, your council on disabilities to have it? How much pool does the councilor have? Can we get a stop sign out here? No, I know he's the no. next person to ask me. Oh, since since I've good. been here, and Bob Montague's not here because he was really on it as well. I've called as well. With, uh, when um, Mayor Darkwoods was the city councilor from Ward 4, I don't know how many people at the DPW. Um, Angela Plasman, and really what they're saying is that it doesn't warrant one because oh, yes, there, is, oh, there isn't it a does. number, I, I, what I believe, I was told by one of the DPW people who's no longer there, was that there's, it doesn't show that there's a need because there aren't a lot of um, accidents. accidents. So anytime yeah, anyone yeah, tells me that they have a problem, you know, I say call the DPW, because oh, yeah. they're supposed to be recording everything. Oh, so, no. you know, I haven't ever checked to see, you know, tell me about that intersection. Yeah. But it's it's really a bad intersection. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. So, <coughs> but, that's but you know, that could be worked on. I'll bring that forward to Ryan. He can yeah. try to interview. Yeah. 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 I don't know if there's one out there or not, a senior center sign directing people down the street and the senior center. The reason I'm saying that is there's one way out that way, and it has an arrow. Yeah. And if you follow that, you end up in the Gazette parking lot or, 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 the, or the other building. You don't have it right, I don't think, right outside this row. Right at the corner. At the corner. You, you so, are, you have observed that correctly. There is no sign. There was a sign that we paid for when they did over Con Street. That sign, all those signs, were, the two of them were removed. And that one was never put back, and I have inquired at the DPW about that sign. So it, it, it isn't there, it was there, and it should be. It was funny. Yeah, it was a sign yeah. 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 nothing here. And so, yeah, luckily, I don't know where it is, but if somebody didn't, well, you know, and they were and they're looking for that sign, or yeah, coming this way, they wouldn't come down this street. And you're past the senior center. Yeah. And, and one of the other. Uh, complaints that I got or inquiries is um, about the front not really being marked senior center mm -hmm. and I'm there yet yeah, it is it's up at the top which with the trees you can't really see yeah. yeah. so um, one of the things really to look at again is to have some kind of a display sign out there that we're in for an arts council we had Leland and make a neon sign or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, that's something else with, with funds from our gift account, um, you know, to, to purchase a sign for out there. So thank you for bringing that up, and it is true there is one sign there now. If you come down New South Street, you'll see one in front of McDonald and one on, um, on before you turn on the fruit Did we pay for the one that's missing? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, there's, yeah, I've yeah. inquired. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's all I got for that. Any questions on anything regarding the grounds and buildings? Yeah. We'll move on to old business. Uh, so I already talked about the brick project. Um, Highland Valley Elder Service Grants. Um, we applied for three grants, one for transportation, one for um, interpreting um, many of our flyers um, into Spanish, and our companion program. So that the transportation and the companion program are uh, grants that we've asked for for before. Um, and then uh, interpreting some of our flyers into Spanish, that's new for us. Um, and I think any day now we're going to hear if we were awarded any of the grants. Okay, Joanne's saying on Monday, um, they had said that. So hopefully, yeah. no, hopefully we do hear soon. Um, then the Executive Office of Elder Affairs Formula Grant that was submitted and that grant is based on a dollar amount that the legislature sets, which is $8 per senior. 
We have 5,874 seniors in Northampton. So we can apply for a grant of $46,992. So um, the funds from that would be for program coordinator and social worker hours. So that's what that money goes to. Um, and then I did mention um, that I you know, I'm applying um, and looking at CPA money and um, capital improvement money for me. So you can give money to the Academy of Music to get rid of lead paint, I mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, I would agree. There's a lot of um, different programs that the CPA money is gone to. And hopefully we can be a recipient based on our needs. I'm just going to take a minute here. Um, many of you may not have met Diana Solar, who is our newest board member. She was here in July, because we didn't have an August meeting, so it's been a while. So we welcomed um, her to our, our board, and uh, are happy to have you. And at some point, you'll get to know who everybody is. And we do have uh, names, plates, but we'll, we'll get some holders for them. Because it's Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> so, Under no business uh, on the Highland Valley Advisory Board, we're going to say that the last move is down to the last, so we'll start with the open house. So I did mention about the open house, and you know we're, the staff is really getting prepared for it. And, um, as I mentioned, it would be great to have board members and we'll also have a lot of volunteers here. And um, again, having uh, demonstrations and displays and all of that. So a welcome to the community to come in and see who we are and what we do. We wanted to have the wisdom project too, so if you want to bring that up at your next meeting. I'll be here at the next meeting oh, yeah, for right. you. Oh yeah, can I ask? <laughs> if there's any board members who have any like reception slash clerical skills whatsoever and you're um, available next Thursday the 17th, I um, am in desperate, I'm sorry, the 18th, I'm in desperate need of um, receptionists. I've been trying to get um, both our receptionists requested the days off for that morning and I right now Oh, don't feel bad. I've been <laughs> trying for 32 years. <laughs> so, anybody that wants to go through a little bit of training so that you can fill in, um, we can have up to three of you up there. So it would be wonderful if anybody wants to help out. <laughs> so it's next Thursday from about 8:15 to 12 noon. If there's any availability, um, I have two people. One's checking with his wife and one's confirmed. <laughs> I just checked. Okay. I'm confirmed. Awesome. It's nice too. Yay. What a good boy. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much. Love you all. <laughs> Don't tell me what you That day. Yes, we could. The 16th. So it was Thursday the 18th. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's all right. All the 16th was the disability question. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So I'm one of many, right? So that's you, me, somebody else. Somebody else. Yeah. Okay, we're up to the annual holiday craft and festival marketplace. So each year we put on um, something around the holidays and. And keep changing the name of it a bit. It still has its, the same focus. But this year we're calling it Craft Festival, which it was, and Marketplace, so that we're bringing in more than just craft beer people. Mm -hmm. So there'll be other types of people selling what they have. Could be Antiques, it could be Avon, could be Leah Sophia. So um, Crystal actually is the head on head uh, person planning 
this event, and um, it's one of the um, bigger fundraisers that we do for the um, Senior Center. So you'll be hearing more about that, so mark your calendars. That's a Saturday. What day again? Um, uh, it's a November 22nd. Saturday after Thanksgiving. Before, I know, before, before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's what what do you mean for yeah. set up, Crystal? What do you mean by set up? Set up for the craft area? Yeah. It's going to be um, the Thursday and Friday before, like moving tables and marking the floor. Um, yeah, putting out all of the stuff that we as the senior center sell. Because every room, uh, well, I shouldn't say every room. Break room, lobby, classroom, activity room, and social day are all used in the library because Santa is here um, to meet and bring kids and just hot chocolate. So we try to bring in a lot of different um, venues into this. So we just keep our fingers crossed that it's not a blizzard that day. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. So if any of you, any of you guys have special crafts that you do or if you sell Leah <laughs> Sophia or fake perfume or sell books if you're an author. <laughs> you can yeah. totally I have in Argentina. Uh, <laughs> 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 what an excuse. <laughs> 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 All of that um, you all should have gotten yeah. with your agenda or minutes or both um, about the Northampton Dollars for Scholars. Each year they ask yeah. if yeah. we would like to have a team, and I know one year, Kathy, you did it. Yeah. Um, I don't remember who else was on the team. I've done it once. Okay, so they're asking if um, we want to have a team again, and typically um, someone sponsors the team that we do because we as a we don't you know put. $200 into it. So if anybody's interested, let me know. It is on October 4th, and it's, you know, a lot of fun and, and very interesting to go to it. And it's a, it's for a good cause. It's for dollars for scholars. It gets our students, um, you know, some funding for them when they go off to college. Or, yeah. So if you're interested, let me know. And um, I think three people can be on a team. So let me know. Then I can let the... I think we have three in an alternate. Okay. On the team, if something happens to one, they can jump in or something like that. So it's your chance to really show what you know about the city. Make a complete idiot of yourself. <laughs> yeah, there are, there are some very qualified people hey, who are in this. <laughs> Serious. So, yeah, again, if anybody's interested, let me know, and then I can go contact them. Some people play it really, really serious. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. So, I wonder what you're going to do. Right? You would want something else? Yeah. Okay. So, um, we are registered, our nonprofit um, Elder Service Inc. is registered for this year's Valley Gives campaign. Um, so, I'm asking all of our board members if um, they can help spread the word. Um, we're going to be, I'm going to set up a Twitter account. We already have a Facebook account, um, but we can link our Facebook to a Twitter account so that way people who are using social networking sites, using computers, um, will have access to our information. Um, I need volunteer assistance to help tell our story. Um, the, the money that we get from Valley Gives is going towards our transportation program. So it's going to help provide transportation to people who, like they can't get to Dr. Sprint and they can't get down to the senior center. Um, and I want to go out. I want to work with Joanne and hopefully volunteer assistance to be able to videotape people who are currently using our transportation program so that they can tell the community what this program means to them and you know what it does for them. So it would be somebody who would have you know the availability to I would reach out to the participants to see if they're willing, get them to sign, you know, the waivers and everything. And it would be basically going out 
and interviewing them, having the interview video taped, and then we're going to put a slideshow production together so that when people click on our Valley Gives page, it's going to be a slideshow presentation of what we're doing and how we're helping people. That's and nice. um, we can, we're going to send out all of our email addresses that we have registered in my senior center from our participants. They'll get the link to Valley Gives to be able to, it's, you can start donating on December 1st, and it's December 1st through December 10th. Um, so I'm going to email the link out to the participants who we have email addresses for. Um, but really, word of mouth, talking about the center, talking about what we do, talking about our Valley Gives campaign, um, it means a lot. Um, it's going to help us a lot. So I want everybody to know what we're doing. Anybody who's interested in helping um, with the campaign, I welcome the assistance. You can email me, call me, stop me in the hall. <laughs> Anything that you'd like to help with, it would be great. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I make a can we vote on going into executive session for this? Uh, yeah. We can, yeah. It, it, you have to state the purpose. The purpose of the executive session is to discuss the issues that Highland Valley has and has not had. And I don't believe that our laundry should be here out to the world. And because you'll be talking about personnel. Personnel. So then the um, board meeting is closed at 2.16 for executive session.